Stove Leg Media, igniting conversation. Welcome to True Crime to Go. What can I get for you? Oh, man. Uh, well, it's, do you have any basketball players that, I don't know, maybe get in some trouble and then there's a, a weird question about the Bill of Rights? Pull up to the second window and we'll see you next crime. Welcome to True Crime to Go. Jamie, she cut you off, man. She You're taking did. too long to order. Well, this is a very complex issue, so I had to make sure I had all my toppings right, if you know what I'm saying. Well, I mean, you got 10 minutes or less to do it, but before that, you doing all right? How's, how's things going? I'm good, man. It's raining outside. Besides that, I'm great. I feel like it is a perpetual state of rain in Kentucky, also accompanied with 70-degree highs and 40-degree lows. It's baseball season. It's a roller coaster. Though. That's great. Why don't you get us rolling? Today, we're going to be talking about the case that involves a former Kentucky Wildcat and NBA star, and his name is Rajon Rondo. Yeah, it is. And he will find himself in the center of a legal battle that raises questions about gun rights, domestic violence, and the pursuit of justice. Now, Rondo was a Louisville native. and He was pulled over for a traffic violation this year on January 28th. But what followed would really thrust him into the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. So during the stop, officers discovered a loaded firearm, marijuana, drug paraphernalia in Rondo's possession. And this prompted his arrest and ignited a legal firestorm that continues to go on to this day. Yeah, so Rondo played in the in the last few Tubby Smith years at Kentucky. He went on to win championships with the Boston Celtics, had a really long NBA career, and has settled kind of back in the Louisville area. Now, he's being charged with having an illegal firearm, and that's really where all this starts and ends as far as the controversy. So his defense would claim that the gun charge violates his Second Amendment rights. They say that Rondo, who's supposedly disqualified from having a firearm because he has previous domestic protective orders against him, So they're claiming that the law that prevents him from having a firearm is unconstitutional. Prosecutors obviously oppose that stance, citing several Supreme Court rulings that do disqualify people that are deemed too dangerous from carrying guns and their Second Amendment rights no longer matter at that time. And as the legal arguments intensify, Rondo's continuing to face these charges. His trial is supposed to start on April 25th, and his fate really hangs in the balance of all these decisions. And he has decided not to take a plea agreement because he's determined to fight for his innocence and fight for his constitutional rights no matter what it costs him. Well, this is all playing out in court, and there's a lot of things from his past that has been revealed that doesn't paint his character in the best light. He has legal troubles that are not confined to just the right here, right now, but a history of volatile behavior and domestic disputes that are in his past. And this casts doubts on his claims of innocence and adding complexity to an already contentious case. There's allegations of threatening behavior to accusations that he was brandishing firearms rondo's past confrontations with the law paint a troubling picture of a man who was grappling with personal demons and unresolved conflicts but in the middle of all this legal maneuvering and media scrutiny there's really just one question that remains here is this going to result in him being punished for his crimes as the law currently sits or is this gonna lead to some type of change in the way the laws are interpreted the second amendment includes is not all of but includes the right to bear arms in our country and that's a very controversial issue pretty much all the time now but are there circumstances that should cause you to lose those rights like we said currently the supreme court has said yes certain mental illnesses certain behaviors felons you can't own guns in rondo's situation He's claiming that that's violating his constitutional rights. Do you agree with him? I do not. And I have personal experience that I can talk to that would uh, back me up, I guess. So I have a, I have a friend, I'm not going to say any names or anything, but this person was in a relationship where something very similar happened, where there was a domestic violence order that was issued 
And that prohibited the person uh, that it was taken out against from carrying weapons because that person threatened harm with a weapon. I feel like in that situation, you have at least temporarily lost your rights to a firearm because you've threatened to hurt someone with a firearm. So I feel like, you know, in the long term, you know, I, I can't say that it's legal to take it away forever, but until this is resolved in a peaceful manner, yeah, you can't have a firearm right now. Yeah. I, I feel good about saying that. Yeah, I think the danger in that, which I completely agree with you, first of all, the danger in that is people making accusations that are false and you losing a right during the investigation. It that, is very much the opposite of innocent until proven guilty. It's you're guilty until we can figure this out. <laughs> right. But but still, I think especially with the unrest about weapons in society right now, I think we'll be m- moving in the direction of more people not having guns. So I think Rondo's objection and protests here are going to fall on deaf ears. And if you, yeah, I mean, if you threaten someone with a gun, you probably need to lose it for a little bit. Yeah. And so. I mean, you know, I'm a huge UK basketball fan. I followed Rondo's entire career. Feels like he's uh, really underrated as an NBA player. He needs to go to jail for all these charges. He deserves the penalty subscribed in the law for his behaviors, including carrying the gun, because whether or not he says it violated his rights, he still did it when he was legally ordered not to. That's a fight you can fight while not having a gun. Yeah. To try to get that overturned, but he chose to carry it anyway. And now retroactively arguing some type of stance here. And I want to be clear. Like I very much am a proponent of like, we have individual rights in this country and, and those should not be violated. So I would, I do feel like this needs some attention and what can be changed in the law to reflect this accurately you know yeah because there does there doesn't need to be any weird loopholes in this law it needs to be pretty clear-cut agreed and i mean i hope it's okay to share you and i both own firearms that were legally obtained we've been through safety training and and done those kinds of things so we're not i don't think either of us is anti-gun but we are anti-hurting people and i think once you do that then you open yourself up to losing privileges even though rights versus privileges yes it's a right but you don't have a right to hurt people. Right. If I if I point my weapon at someone in a threatening manner and it's not warranted, like they haven't been trying to physically kill me, then I'm doing something illegal and I need to be held accountable for that. As should Rondo. But we'll uh, keep you posted on this one. Like I said, his trial is set to begin in April, so we've got a month or so. But we'll see what happens with the old wildcat on the run. This has been a crime story in 10 minutes or less. Would you like crime with that? You've listened to True Crime Cast, distributed by Stoveleg Media. Check out stoveleg.com to find out more about your hosts and to find other podcasts to listen to. Stoveleg Media, igniting conversation.